NASA's third moon landing mission, Apollo 13, never reached the lunar surface. An oxygen tank incident about 56 hours into the voyage prompted the astronauts to abandon all hopes of getting to the moon. It was damaged, but the crew could return to Earth in the lunar module before transferring to the crew module for a splashdown. The mission is remembered as a showcase of NASA's creative brains cooperating out to save lives in space. Two years ago, a monument honoring the Apollo 13 mission's 50th anniversary was unveiled. At first dispatching a dog and then a man named Yuri Gagarin into space, the USSR seemed to be dominating the space race. On July 20, 1969, Neil Armstrong walked on the moon during the Apollo 11. NASA aimed to land men on the moon's Framaro region with Apollo 13. The preparation of the spaceship for the Apollo 13 was in three stages. The service module was a big cylindrical ship with the primary oxygen tanks and engines. It had to be precise timing. 2. Onboard guiding computer speed. Three men crewed the Apollo expedition like the previous two. James Lovell, father of four, was the mission commander. John Swigget, command module pilot, fills in for an astronaut who had the measles. When Apollo 13 lifted out at 2.37 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on April 11, 1970, no one seemed to care about the fascinating mission. However, little did anybody realize that within 10 minutes of the broadcast's conclusion, something would occur that would pique the world's curiosity, but for the time being, everything was good. The crew would complete a 180-degree rotation to connect the module and release the expanded main rocket behind. Fred Hayes made some fun of his co-workers during the 55-hour and 46-minute television broadcast. They were 322,000 kilometers from Earth, four-fifths to the Moon. Unfortunately, the damaged wires had now been visible to everyone on board. Tank 2 blew up. Master alarm lights went off and a power outage alert was sent off. Houston, we have a problem here. Those were the legendary words of mission leader James Lovell. An oxygen tank was empty and another one was being low. Engineers on the ground, however, were disappointed. Within a few minutes, it was clear that the catastrophic failures had happened and they were very bad. The crew realized they were in serious danger. The crew recognized they would soon lose all oxygen and hence their final fuel cell as they saw their precious oxygen slip away. They were now 200,000 miles from Earth without power, lights or water and going in the other direction. Unless they change their path, they will continue to circle the moon but will miss the planet. The entire world was now watching, including the astronauts' families. The monitoring experts on the ground decided 1 hour and 29 seconds just after explosion that the astronauts should utilize lunar module as lifeboat. How would oxygen be supplied? Was there sufficient food aboard the lunar module? How would the team return to Earth? To save power, the command module systems were all turned down to save the crucial ones. With just 15 minutes of energy and oxygen remaining in the malfunctioning service module, they all made it to lunar module. It wasn't perfect, but it had to do. The incorrect foot motion might rupture the ship, letting their air out and killing them all. How much time would it take them to reach home? So the big concern remained, how to return the three men. If the main engine fails, the crew may utilize the moon's gravity to hurl them back to Earth in one to two days. They'd circle the moon. Due to the shift in gravity, the controls were no longer responsive to inputs. It was like piloting a combat plane, except with the controls reversed. However, the calculations done back on Earth predicted that they might run out of energy and water before they could return. But how would they catch up? To put this in perspective, this was one year before Intel introduced the microprocessor. The crew had to carefully duplicate the instructions before losing radio communication as they passed beneath the moon. Because of this, the crew had to reduce their water consumption to around one-fifth of usual, 
even though the calculations show that a 5-minute burn would save them 24 hours of journey time overall. The workers had to bag their trash and almost cease drinking water. Freddie Hayes suffered a bladder infection followed by a fever. The world observed as a deadly adventure unfolded, an experience unlike any other in years. The three guys were producing too much carbon dioxide and were about to suffocate. To make matters more difficult for the crew, ground-based engineers could only provide prototypes. The real procedure had to be developed by them on their own. The most difficult task remained, returning to Earth. Re-entry was risky. The crew had to alter their path manually. They could only pray for the best by aligning the Earth with the middle of their window. To do so, new ways have to be invented. These procedures would normally take months to develop, but they were produced in three days by flight controllers working under the direction of flight director Gene Kranz. Each computation has to be exact. The crew scrawled the instructions on scrap paper they found on board. However, when the crew flipped the switches to turn on the command module, all turned on, much to everyone's belief. For the first time when the service module wandered away, they could see the real scope of the disaster. Aside from that, the blast may have damaged their heat shield. Even though it was very probable that they would heat up in atmosphere, the crew couldn't focus on it at the time since they had to abandon their own lunar module lifeboat. When the darkness did not stop, everyone on the planet got immensely concerned. The crew successfully released their parachutes after passing through the atmosphere. After a perilous voyage that lasted 142 hours, 54 minutes and 41 seconds, they arrived safely in the Pacific on April 17. In the end, all three passengers returned to their homes unharmed and a million people across the world had their prayers answered. Unfortunately, the thermostatic controls on the heater were not changed to accommodate the alteration. The command module is presently housed at Kansas's Cosmosphere and Space Center, while the lunar module is thought to have exploded in the Earth's atmosphere. James Lovell, the mission commander, made history by becoming the first astronaut to moon twice. It's dubbed a successful failure since NASA was able to safely return the whole crew to Earth on a broken spacecraft. The narrative of Apollo 13 exemplifies the finest of engineering and quick thinking on one's feet. Returning three men to Earth after 200,000 miles in space is a story that will be remembered for a long time. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch. I'll be back with another video for you shortly.